Francis Ford Coppola, legendary director who gave us such films as Jack and Supernova, is back with another film in 2024 called Megalopolis. And he's a triple threat here, writing, directing, and producing this experience. Some may watch a movie like this and consider it a self-indulgent, masturbatory hot mess. I agree. Let's talk about Megalopolis in a spoiler-free review. I'm not gonna lie to you, when I saw it was starring Adam Driver and the trailer was all over the place with sci-fi craziness, I was worried because Adam Driver has a very, very interesting catalog of films. He'll do a big blockbuster film like Star Wars, but then he goes on the artistic side of things and he's raising a child that just so happens to be a marionette doll. He's diverse, is I guess what I'm saying, and so this movie felt like it was gonna be closer to that Pinocchio style than something like Kylo Ren. And while I'm absolutely all for off-the-beaten-path sci-fi movies like Equilibrium, Dark City, or something that became a pop culture icon like The Matrix, this is one of those attempts that falls squarely on its face. Before I dive into this review, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, I post movie reviews every single week on the channel along with rants, occasional live streams, r really all movies all the time. I would love to have you stick around. When Megalopolisaurus Rex wound down and the credits started to unfold upon me, I noticed that the movie was dedicated to his wife. And immediately I started thinking, wow, Francis Ford Coppola must really hate his wife to dedicate this film to her. What, what's that? His wife is dead? Jesus. Uh, okay, that's dark. Uh, cut this out in post, Tabitha. Thank you. Appreciate it. Francis Ford Coppola dedicated this movie to his wife, and I think that's admirable. I think that that's a beautiful, wonderful send-off for his late great wife. Uh, here's the deal. This movie has a ton of different things going on, a lot of different ideas, concepts. Coppola's playing with the idea of time here, how some people have too much of it, how others don't have near enough how history repeats itself, how every great new empire rises and falls, and from the ashes we build a new, hopefully stronger, hopefully a more progressive, more prosperous one. That's gonna lead us to our protagonist of the film, Adam Driver as Caesar Catalina. Caesar, along with everyone else in this film, lives in New Rome, as it's called. It's kind of like New Coke. It's, you know, it's Rome 2.0. America's fallen, we're trying again with something fresh. Bold move to name it after a fallen previous society, but eh, civilizations, we can adapt, we can grow. And that's exactly what this Caesar wants to do. He's a visionary, when vision is scary. He's in the background tinkering and, and toying with his new pet project, which is a magical new element that he can shape and sculpt to his desires. It can basically do everything, cure ailments, Make conveniently accessible walkways. Harness the power of green energy and create massive overflowing golden leaves that you can use as a beautiful indoor space. Our boy Caesar has the ability to stop time. Pitbull style. That was a song Pitbull came out with for Men in Black 3. <laughs> Pop culture, it's what we do here. What a sad thing to store in one's brain. Anyway, now as I stated earlier, this is an art film, it's abstract, so does Caesar actually have the ability to stop time and envision things and change things to his liking, or is a lot of this more of an out-of-body emotional experience, not one that we're supposed to take at face value? It's just dreamers see things in a different viewpoint than others, than the, the smaller minions out there. Guys like Caesar know how to build worlds. It, it's all they think about. It's all they want to do is, is better mankind. Is it possible Francis Ford Coppola sees a bit of himself in Caesar? One would assume, but <laughs> no judgment. This film is a who's who of actors. We got Giancarlo Esposito in here. We have Aubrey Plaza as a fame-seeking gold digger. John Voight's in here as Hamilton Crassus III. My boy Lawrence Fishburne's in this. Love fish, I love seeing my fish again. Chloe Fineman from SNL's randomly thrown in. We have Jason Schwartzman here, who, as a fan of Phantom Planet, one of five probably on the planet, it was really fun seeing him bust out the drum kit for just like five seconds, and I'm pretty sure he did like a beat from one of his songs in Phantom Planet. He was the drummer there, though. So. Again, pop culture, so subscribe for that. It was really fun to see Sam Witwicky back in the films, though. Shia LaBeouf is in this. Even Stevens, man himself, back in the flesh. He gets to play a flamboyant, 
rich, entitled little shithead who is going to do everything he can to derail his family and grab power for himself. We have a bit of a Game of Thrones thing going on here where everybody's kind of related in some way. The top is almighty, all powerful, all wealthy, and there really is no middle or lower class. It's all lower class at this point. People are fighting for scraps on the streets while all these politicians and big wigs promise them greatness only to never deliver a single crumb to them. Everything I'm saying so far sounds like a fun film. Very interesting, intricate movie, but <laughs> there's, there's a lot of bullshit happening. For starters, not a scene goes by where someone's not doing an interpretive dance in the background or foreground. Like, they'll just be leaving a concert and you'll have a couple girls on a car going like, we're in La La Land, except for we're not. Adam Driver's constantly uttering Shakespearean quotes. This is a love story. Actually, the love story is the story. Everything else is kind of just window dressing. It really all comes down to holding on to the one you love, finding love in the world, because it's everywhere, man. It's all over the place, man. You just have to grab it and create with it. It is a beautiful sentiment for sure. It's just told in a very, very insane way. Natalie Emanuel is the love interest in this. I always considered her kind of a new age Jessica Alba, very pretty to look at, not really in anything good. Uh, that's what separates her from Alba. Alba had some good films. Natalie is basically poisoning the well every time she shows up in anything. I have not seen her in a single good movie and that remains constant today. If you're one of those folks that first and foremost thinks, man, I hope this movie's not woke. I hope it doesn't have any political slant. Not gonna wanna watch this movie because it absolutely has politics in mind. It not so subtly references things happening in politics today. And Francis Ford Coppola doesn't give a shit about what you think. This is for him. This movie's for him and his wife. And so in that sense, I'm like, good for him, man. He, he, he made a name for himself. He's got plenty of money to burn. Make the movie, make the art you want to, and be damned with critics like me and folks that don't want to pay to see it. Now, that doesn't mean that I can't still criticize and say this movie is an absolute dumpster fire of ideas. Narratively speaking, it's a jumbled shit show that quickly resolves in a very unsatisfying way where it felt like this movie should have been three or four hours longer to even get close to the results we got. But again, there's interesting things in the film. It has a lot to say. It just doesn't have the time to say it all. Ironic because this film's all about time. I think the element that Caesar is toying with is called Megalon or Megala. Something like that, that goes off the name Megalopolis, because that's the world that Caesar wants to create. He wants to get out of this new Rome and create a utopia for all. And there's going to be pushback on that as well, where his counterparts, his relatives say, a utopia is an impossibility, you'll never get there. And so why, yes, there were several times during this film that I thought, I could just leave now. I, I don't need to see this anymore. It's so all over the place. But another part of me stayed to see where the hot mess went. Yes, it made me cringe up like crazy. It felt like a really old movie attempting to be a really modern sci-fi movie, if that makes any sense. Like an indie film that has a budget of $35 million, but it's shooting for the moon, trying to make it look like this is a $400 million production. There's some really cool ass shots in this. You see them all in the trailer. Statues are coming to life, they're falling over. It's all symbolic, of course. But then there's this really gross golden hue, bloom lighting effect that's going on all over the place. None of that that really looked nice to me. Coppola's playing with the reverse feature in Premiere Pro. Something you saw in 90s films like Donnie Darko where the pool balls go in reverse. It was slick then. Now it just comes off as kind of kind of outdated. If you watched the trailer for this and thought it was going to be kind of like The Matrix, you know, you got Lawrence Fishburne in this narrating some of the time randomly. No, it's not. And he's not anything like Morpheus, even though it kind of was presented that way. And there is zero action at all. It's not that type of film. This is a Hamlet production. This is a rise and fall of power. This idea from Coppola might actually have worked if it were, say, a 15, 20 episode run on Max. But as a two and a half hour R-rated movie, no, this, this is failing on all fronts. For me, if you're one of those people, and you know yourself better than I know you, that likes the kind of way out there film where everybody else in your family rolls their eyes, is like, shut this shit off after three minutes, and you're like, no, this is, this is my cup of tea. This might be your cup of tea. 
But I think general audiences are going to hate the living hell out of this. People are going to get up and leave. I almost did. And we can just fondly remember Francis Ford Coppola for The Godfather and Apocalypse Now. And that's fine. He made two absolute legendary films and now he's just doing shit for himself. Well, there you have it. My thoughts on Megalopolis. What an achievement. Let me know if you saw this movie. Please put your comments below. Like this video. Subscribe. Do all that crap. Stick around. Notification bell. Whatever. And hopefully, I see you next time. If I have any left. Take care.